So I've tweeted the um, slides using my Grappler Ulrich Twitter handle, so if you want to look at those. So I wonder how many people of you have seen this error. Suddenly, you've refreshed your page, your WordPress site, and you have a fatal error. The site's all blank. Cannot redeclare in queue scripts previously declared. So this is one of the big problems. So if you have two functions with the same name in your code, so one is in queue scripts in your plugins folder, and the other is in your themes functions.php. The problem is WordPress only allows unique names for their function names. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today, or one of my points, is that you need to use a unique name. Because in different parts in WordPress and PHP code, a unique name is needed. So this is normally done with prefixing. So prefixing is adding something in front of the other element. So in this case, we've got in queue scripts, and I've prefixed it with the word prefix. So how do you go about creating a prefix? So let's say I'm creating a theme called Beautiful Vienna. I'm not really great at choosing names. Um, so you would do something like beautiful underscores Vienna underscores. But then I have some people I've seen who have wanted to use initials. So initials like BV underscores. But what you need to be careful of, there might be another theme called Breathtaking Vancouver. And that has the same initials. So if you prefix two functions with the same name, so you end up having BV underscores in Q scripts, you'll have a clash again. So in my examples, further examples, I'll be using Vienna as my prefix. And so this is how the proper way of doing it. So in PHP code, there are normally four different places where you need to do prefixing. The first we've already looked at is functions. And then classes, if you're using object-oriented programming, global variables, and constants. So let's look a bit of the code. So here, you'd, if you run two classes with the same name, you'll get a fatal error, like with functions. So here, I prefix my class with Vienna, so to make it unique. But then we come to our first exception, the exception being that functions within classes only need to be unique within that class. So it's like having street names. So a street name has to be unique within a city. But I'm sure you all know of different cities with the same street name. So it's the same thing applies to classes. Then moving on to globals. The problem with globals is they can be easily overwritten. So if one plugin defines the global, and then another plugin defines the same global variable, and then that will get overwritten, so you don't get the results back that you expect. And then on the other hand, with constants, constants can only be defined once. So the first time it's defined, that is the value that is set. So if your plugin or theme is trying to define the same constant later on, the value will not be changed. So we move on to, Oops. there we go. We move on to WordPress code. So looking at which places in WordPress do we need to add pre prefixing to. So the first example we're looking at today is hooks, so filters and actions. And you have a similar problem with hooks as with variables, global variables, and constants. So here, if you've got a variable and you defined a value, and someone else defines it before you or after you, then they can change that value. And so if the value is not related to the, the content that you're expecting, then that can cause an issue. So that's why you need to always prefix your variables and your hooks to make sure they're unique to your situation so that not other people are accidentally changing the content. So moving on to a few other examples from functions that are used in WordPress. So the first one is used when you want to define a new image size. But the problem is, if you use the same image size handle name, then the only the second image that the second time that you define it, that's the values that are used. So if you're using here a thousand and five hundred pixels wide image, 
and you go and define it again with another value, then that's the value that will be used. Or if you move on to settings, if you're using this, both the same settings name, then you'll be overwriting someone else's settings, or you don't get back the settings values that you expect. Or another one is with adding menu pages. Sorry. Adding menu pages. If the, the page log is not unique, you'll end up having multiple settings pages on one page. And also in the left-hand side, in the admin bar, with all the settings, you'll have multiple links to the same page. So moving on to enqueuing scripts and styles. So this is a style handle. This is the name of the style. And if you've got two plugins that are using the same name, only the first one will be loaded. So for example, a plugin loads a style for their plugin on the front end, and a the theme loads afterwards and tries to use the same name, their style won't be loaded, and your, theme, your front page looks horrible because the theme's design is not being loaded. So the way you can prevent this is by using a unique slug. And a method that I found was easy to remember is, is if the script or the style is unique, then you want to have a unique name. Because we come to our next exception, is you do not want to ex prefix third-party scripts. Now, the reason is that this script is a common script. It's not unique. It might be different plugins are using the same script. Like how many plugins use jQuery? And so in this example I've got is for FitWidth, which is a JavaScript which makes sure that your YouTube videos are responsive. And so I'm following uh, the standard that Core uses. So I prefix the handle with the library that it's dependent on, so jQuery. And then I have the name of the library that I'm using. And this is all written in small characters, and the spaces are divided with a dash. I've also started um, a little library with common standards that perhaps we could work to, to creating a global standard that we could all use. So moving on to localized script. So if you want to translate or localize a script that is being a string that is being used in a script, you would use WP localized script. And the, what you need to be careful of is the object name. If that is not unique, then you'll have the same problem of data being overwritten. And it can come to some strange situations where the output is string is completely different and not related to your script or to the situation. So we just looked at the four different places in PHP where we need to add prefixing, and then also the different places in WordPress, so with hooks, add image size, add option, looking when you're adding a many page, in queuing styles and scripts, and then when lo trying to localize a script. So I've got a question for you today. So the people who get the right answer get a free lunch. So, how many, so with a raise of hands, how many people do you think, how many people of you think that, how many functions there are in WordPress core? So put your hands up if you think they're around 800. No one? Okay, what about around 1,100? One person, two, three, okay. How many people think they're around 7,000 for hooks and functions? Okay, we're getting a bit more. How many people think they're around 15,000? Okay, around the same amount. Okay, the right answer is about 7,000. So around 7,000 hooks and functions in WordPress core. So my point is that there's so much code available, so much functions that you can use in WordPress core, so use them and don't try to reinvent the wheel. So if you're not sure what functions WordPress core has, there's a developer reference. You can go to developer.wordpress.org and then you can enter whatever you're looking for, like I've done here with scripts, and then you get a list of uh, hooks, filters, functions, classes that you can use. So the first example for today is loading scripts. So I do theme reviews on WordPress.org, and sometimes I see that people have hard-coded this HTML. It's either in the header or some other template file. But the problem is, is that other developers who want to make changes lose control over it. 
because they have to go into the header.php or the other template files to make the changes. And it also becomes very difficult if you want to load the scripts on certain pages. So by using the WordPress core feature, the WordPress core function, WP in Q script or style, you are using a standard function that is available to all theme developers so they can edit it. And so using that, other people can say, oh, I don't want this script to load on that page or on this page. And you can also prevent, like we looked at it with third-party scripts, you can prevent the script being loaded multiple times. So the next thing I see is also when you have a dependency. So you have a script like this one here. It's dependent on jQuery. So jQuery needs to be loaded first before this script can be loaded. And WordPress has also a solution for that. You can define the name of the script that you need as a dependency. So this makes sure that it's cl cleaner code. I was working on a project recently where we had a couple of dependencies. And it wasn't clear, just looking at the PHP code, which script was dependent on which one. And so by defining it here, you can just look at the PHP code without needing to go into, into the JavaScript to see what the dependencies are. And it also makes sure, when you're using multiple dependencies, that it loads all in the correct order. Because sometimes, you, like in this case, you need jQuery to load before the fit width so that it works correctly. The next point is using core scripts. jQuery is included in WordPress core. And so that's why you should always use that as it's a standard version. All theme developers and plugin authors know what version WordPress core is running. So if suddenly a plugin started loading jQuery 3.0, which was released recently, there might be some issues. But when it's included in WordPress core, then every developer knows when the next version of WordPress is being released, they can test their themes with the better version and fix any issues before it's released live. So the next thing is also I've seen quite common is you want to load a certain script only a certain page because it's a lot more performant and you're less likely to have issues. So you want to use the right functions, the right method. So there's a number of conditional functions that WordPress core offers. For example, we have is archive here. And so this allows you to say, I only want this script to load on the archive page. And then you also want to use the WP in Q scripts action to make sure it loads in the correct place. And then on the other hand, we've got for the admin area, we've got admin in Q scripts. But this is one of the common things I have seen that people don't always realize is that you can make sure that the code, is, that the JavaScript or the style CSS is only loaded on certain pages. So you can add a little check here like I've done. So this script will only be loaded on the edit page. A new action that was included in Composer when it was released re some time ago now uh, was com customized preview in it. So there's no need to add a conditional. To check if it's the customizer, you can just hook into the customizer action, and then you're good. So I believe that everyone should be using WP in script and style to load their styles. There's no reason not to. Even if you want a script to load only for IE, you can add, use WP script add data. As it applies the same for styles, you can use WP style add data and make sure that the style is only loaded on IE9 or IE8. So the next one, which is, I think was quite new for WordPress, uh, WP add inline script, it allows you to, for in this case, we've, got, we've loaded jQuery fit width. And so we need to initialize it. So we want to say that this script should run on certain classes or IDs. So it's not really performant to add a new CSS um, J, JS file just to load three lines of code. So you can use WP add inline script, and that adds the script just after J 
jQuery fifth list is loaded and then runs it inline. So this makes it a lot easier for other developers also to make changes, and you're sure that it will load in the correct place. So today we've looked at two different things. We've looked at unique namespaces, and then we've looked at how to create a prefix and how that is applied to the different areas in code in PHP and WordPress. And then also we've looked at how important core features are, because they're a standard that you can use and that are available to everyone. And so that reduces the amount of issues that are caused between themes and plugins. So I'd like you to go now and try to work out how you can harmonize your plugins and themes. Thank you.